feeling? How's everybody feeling tonight? Happy, happy. <laughs> All right. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. You know, it's very, very common. Not, in, not only in New Orleans. Of course, here in New York City, anything's common, right? But throughout the Mediterranean, to eat dinner late. I mean, that's just a common thing. People there, in the summer months particularly, they don't really eat till 10, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> How can you go that long? I'd be like chewing on the rug or something, you know? <laughs> Pull all the honey, let me get the floor mat. <laughs> so they snack on these little finger foods. You know what I mean, those little finger foods. And in Greece, they call them what? No, that's in Spain. <laughs> Close. A few countries away. Italy, antipasti, right? Yeah. Mesa. Yes, in Greek. <laughs> Little finger foods. I call them bites of Mediterranean. That's what I call them. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that, okay? Put the dictionaries down. Bites of the Mediterranean. The first bite is going to be Greek-inspired. We're going to make these little veal meatballs, and then we're going to show you how to make some stuffed grape leaves that are just fantastic. Oh, yeah, babe, with a little yogurt sauce. And then from Italy, we're going to do a crustini with chicken livers. And wait till you see these Frico crisps. Oh, put them on your ears. Just anyhow. And then we'll go to Spain and uh, show you guys how to make some incredible citrus marinated black olives and some marinated green olives. We're going to nibble Mediterranean style right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> Little bites, little Mediterranean bites, all different kinds. Olives, love them. That's a great way to uh, kind of have a little snack. Prosciutto and Parmesan. Obviously, I'm in the Italy section over here. And I can see with the Greek section here with the spinacopias and beautiful feta cheese. Hummus, love that. Eggplant with pita bread. More olives, chickpeas, got to love that. Got to love it. I'm going right into, uh, by the way, folks, did you know that uh, Doc Gibbs and Cliff are in the house? I, I didn't know if you... All right. What's up, man? Nice of you to drop by. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> long lunch I see today. <laughs> Very long. Anyhow, as always... I'm going to go right into it here and uh, show you... Quickly, a uh, little Greek-inspired dish, uh, one of my favorites, little veal meatballs that are very simple. Here's what we're going to start with, with cube bread. Very simple, any kind of bread that you want. I'm using a white bread. You could use a country-style bread. But an interesting technique, Hilda does this with her, with her stuffing. You actually soak the bread with a little bit of uh, water and some wine, a little bit of wine. Oh, yeah, babe. Don't worry, we're coming back to this in a very short amount of time. But what you want to do is, see, it's getting happy in there right now, the bread. It was just plain old bread before. Now it's, it's happy. It's happy bread now. So we're going to let that just kind of be. And then in this bowl right over here, what we're going to do is we're going to take an egg, and you've got to kind of just kind of work that egg a little bit, just beat it up. And then, of course, what we're going to do is add a little bit of oregano, and some fresh garlic, right? A little garlic in there, right, babe? All right, now, now that we got that mixed in, we're going to add a little bit of fresh parsley. Lots of chopped onion. Mmm. Doesn't matter. Any kind of uh, type of meatball, I love a lot of onion in there. And then ground veal they use. 
okay, which you can buy in the uh, supermarket. Now, while we're mixing this, it's like kind of like a meatloaf thing. I guess it'd be like a lot easier to do this with the hand, but uh, trying to be politically correct <laughs> with the meatballs. So we're just going to use the spoon right now and work this for maybe, you know, 40, 45 minutes or whatever. All right, now the bread, the bread, right? The bread is really, this is what Hilda does to make her stuffing. She, she squeezes all the bread out of there. Hmm. And then we're going to take the bread now, which is actually going to kind of be like a binder. All right. Good to the last crumb. How you doing, Rhoda? Nice of you to join us as well. Have you met Doc? You've met Doc Gibbs, huh? Okay. Just checking, Rhoda. I'm just giving her a hard time. She knows that. All right, so now that we've... Uh, Gotten the bread in there. See, I do wash my hands. Thanks to the Sopranos. <laughs> now, I'm just going to go right in here with my hands. And then what you do is, once it's all mixed up, you can shape them the size that you want. But keep in mind, folks, that these are sort of like little appetizers, little tapas, if you will, OK? So you don't want them too big. Generally, a lot of these are served finger foods or with toothpicks. So I'm going to start shaping these up, and when we come back, I'm going to show you how we're going to cook them up. And then a kicked-up yogurt sauce. Stick around. We'll be right back. Back in the place. Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Lagazzi here. Mediterranean bites. <laughs> now, there's a reason for that, as we said earlier. And that is because, really and truly, they really eat late, late, late. I like that Sinesta thing, uh, you know, that little snooze thing in the afternoon. Loving that. You know, go to work 12 to 2 and be off till 4.30. Loving that. Siesta, schnoozesta, whatever. I think it's great, whatever it is. We need to have that in this country, I think. Don't you think? It'd be great, you know? I'd go to work, you know, a few television shows, have lunch, take a two, three-hour nap. Get up, rap with Doc Gibbs, Cliff, little music, a couple of small Mediterranean bites, a bottle of wine. Hey, then go back to work, right? Woo! I like that. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you, we're going to take, I don't know if they have that in the Mediterranean yet, but a little essence like this should be universal at least. Kind of see, now they're seasoned. Then what you do... Once they're seasoned, you take a little bit of fine breadcrumb. But I don't know, uh, these, they're not seasoned. You know, they don't have, like, things in there. So, you know what I mean. Then. So we're going to season them up, make them happy. Little essence. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to take some olive oil. See how it's smoking like that? That's just a little bit too hot. No, 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 I, I want you to know that. Because it drives me crazy, because people don't know what these things are at all when they cook. They just jack it up, like, all the way to, uh, you know, and then, and the stove 
it's like shaking because it's, you know, this would be like medium high is what we're looking for. Medium, medium high, you know? Get yourself a few of these. You can paint whatever you want on here too. Like I have super low, just low, lower. You know, use your imagination, whatever you like, you know. But we're looking kind of right now for like the medium, medium high heat because now we're going to take these meatballs like this and we're going to dredge them. That's what this is. Just lightly dredge them in the crumbs and we're going to start browning them off inside of our olive oil. Watch, see? Dredging. Very simple. So, tzatziki. Did I scare you? God, he's speaking foreign tonight. He's barking, saying words like tzatziki. So, we're going to stop browning these here. Now, you can only shake them too much before you, you know, you want to get them brown. You see that color right there? Buck, can we get that? Now we're on to something here. See? Boy, this should be like a backyard game. You know? Huh. All right, so now we're rolling these. We're getting them brown. You keep an eye on those for me? Okay. Tzatziki. That means a yogurt sauce. Yeah. That's what it means. <laughs> Let me show you. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start making a filling for grape leaves. A little olive oil. We're gonna start with some onion. I'll come back to this in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, let me show you this Tzatziki, <laughs> you can do whatever you want with this stuff. Put it on your sandwich, dip the meatballs in there, serve it with grape leaves, use this as a dressing. Let me show you how simple this is. Now, cucumber. But you just can't like put the whole cucumber in there. So let me show you. We'll cut the ends off real quick. What you got to do is you got to peel the cucumber. You see? So in the spring, those of you that have gardens, like I do, and you really don't know what the hell to do with all those cucumbers that are growing, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean. You've been there before. It's like, honey, what do I do? I got 62 of these left. We had cucumbers Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Make some tzatziki. <laughs> You know, that's all. And uh, send it over to your neighbors. This is really good stuff with lamb, too. All right, the onions are doing, how's, how are we doing? What, they, they need a little, they need a little yeah. shaking like yeah. that? Oh, is that all right? Okay. Now, back to tzatziki. You got to take the peel off, folks. Then it's really simple. Then you got to cut it in half because... Those seeds, you know what I mean, they're, they're not good for you. So you got to take the seeds out of these, like you just scrape them down, okay? Now it's seedless. It's seedless tzatziki. So no seeds, because anyhow. So after you do that, you chop up the cucumber, little small little dices like this which is what we're going to do after we seed them. You mix it with yogurt, garlic, a little chopped dill, and you've got dill sauce. You've got a dill yogurt sauce. No, you've got tzatziki is what you have, right? All right. Got tzatziki. Now I'm making the filling for the grape leaves. How are we doing here, all right? Shh, be quiet, be right back. Okay, two minutes, three minutes, the onions, flavor. Mmm, smelling good in here. Now we'll add some pine nuts. Just about like two more minutes for the pine nuts like that. Then, 30, 40 cloves of garlic, whatever you like, okay? 
Okay, now, I'm gonna take rice, I'm gonna take raisins, some fresh mint, take this off the stove, mix it all in a bowl, then I'm gonna add the uncooked rice, little lemon juice for the grape leaves. When we come back, another notch! Stick around! Back in. All of a sudden, Doc Gibbs' CD just fell down. <laughs> Welcome back, Mediterranean Bites, and we have a, a few right now that we've got working, okay? First of all, our veal meatballs, okay? They are browns, and while you were all maybe doing whatever, I don't know, we were finishing this tzatziki. And we kicked it up a notch by adding a little essence in there, if that's all right with you guys. So now we've got kicked up tzatziki. So like I said, this is a great little, this is a great little sauce that you can serve with these grape leaves that we're making. You can make some friends. Thank you. Kicked up tzatziki. See, I don't like my cucumbers, like, small, too. Go to the places that, you know, they're so small, you can't even find it in there. You know, I, don't, I like the texture thing. What can I say? You know, it's a texture thing for me. All right. Hopefully, these will be cooked. <laughs> <laughs> Could be good on steak tatar, too, you know, this tzatziki. <laughs> All right, so, it's all right, guys? Excellent. All right, you can stick around. <laughs> all right, now, there's our first Thank small you. bite Thank done you. in the Greek Thank style. Now, listen to this. I don't have no fancy steamers. I didn't get one this year for, you know, on my list. Yeah. It's all right, I got a regular basic pot and water that I can still do what I got to do. So... We'll come back to these in a second. Watch this. Grape leaves. You know, like in Greece, a lot of those Mediterranean countries, they don't have a lot of fertile land. So they got to use other things. Grape vines. Artichokes is an example. It doesn't take, you know, the guy to go out there four times a day and, you know, the hedge, hedge, chop, chop, water, water. It just grows, you know? And... I love stuffed grape leaves. You can stuff them with all kinds of things. Now, if they're fresh, you got to blanch them in some salted water for four or five minutes to get them tender. If they're jawed, which most of them are that you can buy in the stores, I don't like that, that taste that's in that jar. So I take mine out of the jar and then I submerge them for like a minute in like a little hot water or some wine, make them happy. Get them instantly with the program, you know? <laughs> Now they're ready to work with you, you know? So, what you do is, to do these, there's a little stem from the grapevine. See like that right there? We just like cut that off so that it's flat. And then it's like kind of making like a wonton. What we do is we take a little bit of the uncooked rice and mint and raisin onion mixture, okay? Then what you do is you just fold this side over, fold that side over, just like you're making an egg roll. You see that? And then you roll them up tight, like such. Keep the seam on the bottom. All right? I'll show you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
pressure. Okay, take the little stem off so that it's flat. Nice little filling. Fold it over. Fold it over like a little bundle, see? Then what you do is take the grapevine like that, roll it up. I mean, you can make them as fat as you want. And if you get like a little, they pop like that, you don't have to like freak out and call 911. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Let me show you how we're gonna build my basic pot with water that I didn't get a steamer for Christmas or one of them holidays, you know. Look, you take a little bit of lemon juice, the juice of a lemon in the pot. Maybe the juice of two. Them seeds, they don't bother me like that. Yeah, there's no seed police here today. <laughs> then, a little bit of water, or you could use wine, okay? And then what we do is we take our grape leaves, okay? Oh, wait, you ain't seen nothing yet. And we're going to line my basic pot that I have right here. You get the idea, right? Well, this is a crucial point, so, I mean, I got to get them all in there. You can make these ahead of time, keep them covered. Now, what, let me show you what we're doing here now. All right, see, we've got the basic pot. Now what I want to do is this. Take some good olive oil. Watch. Whoop. Happy. <laughs> Little salt. Some pepper. Then you take a basic plate, okay? Basic plate, since we're making our own steamer. Turn the heat on like medium high. Then we use the plate, either that way or that way, it doesn't matter, whatever you like, to kind of weight them down. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit more water to this, just and so they're covered, right? <laughs> That'd be some sparkling water. And then we cover this. When it starts to boil, we turn it down. We're going to let this steam for an hour so that the rice cooks inside of the grape leaves. You all with me so far on the small bites? All right. All right. Now. Now we're going to take this. Cut it in pieces like this. And we're going to brush it with olive oil. And we're going to put them on the grill. Both sides olive oil, a little seasoning to make crustinis. When we come back, a terrific chicken liver spread for these crustinis. Stick around. We'll be right back. everybody. Just joining you, uh, just joining us here, shame on you. Small bites filtering throughout, little veal meatballs. Now our one hour, the rice starts cooking, swelling, getting very happy inside of the grape leaves. I've taken the plate off now and I've lowered. Can you smell that? Oh. You just wish you had more dishes like that. You know, you could stick your head in the pot. You know, just make it last, you know? We're going to come back to that and served it with the kicked up tzatziki. Then I uh, went over to Italy for a second. 
made some crustinis on the grill, olive oil. Ah, but now what we're going to do is one of my favorite little antipastis with that, and that is making a little mousse or a little pate or a little spread, if you will, with chicken livers. You guys like chicken livers? All right. Here's what we do. You can use a little olive oil. Basically, what I like to do is use a little bacon fat. Yeah, what else you gonna do with it, right? It's good stuff. It's good for the skin. Then we'll take a little bit of onion in that bacon fat like that. And you wanna just sort of saute our onion to get some flavor out of there with a little bit of salt, fresh ground pepper, Now, smell that already? It's like rocket science, right? I mean, bacon fat and onions, right? It's incredible. All right, now, we're gonna take our chicken livers that have been chopped, that's correct. Well, you can have them whole. I like to go ahead and chop them, clean them, rinse them, chop them. I'm gonna show you why because they're gonna really cook easy and we're gonna make a spread out of this. So watch what we're gonna do. I've got some fresh sage. Love fresh sage. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just chop some of the fresh sage. Now don't throw this part of it out. You can use this to marinate something, you know, one of them zip bags or you could make an oil or a vinegar, lots of things. We just want to take a little bit of sage. You don't have to. You could use oregano. You could use basil. All right. And the halfway point like this, I like to kick it up a little bit with a little cognac. Yeah. These are some really good chicken livers. So what you want to do is take it off the heat, add a little brandy or a little cognac. Now they're, now they're drunken livers, right? <laughs> now, you got to watch these over here, you know? Be careful not to, you know, just kind of... Another thing I didn't get. I asked for some eyebrow protectors. <laughs> didn't get them either. I know. I know. What are you going to do? All right, so now once all the alcohol burns out of these chicken livers, and they're cooked, you want to taste them. More salt, more pepper. Right at the end, you're going to add a little bit of capers. But why I say at the end is that like garlic, right? You don't want to add the capers too far, especially we've got a little flame going on, because then they singe. It's not a good thing. <laughs> so, once the livers are cooked, which these are, let them cool. While they're cooling is when you can make the crustinis. Now, come on over here, let me show you. Kicked up tzatziki. Look at these grape leaves. This is how I like to serve them. You can either do a whole platter. See how I'm using a spatula like this to get them out? Okay? You don't want to bust them all up. But look, I'm glad that one did break because can you see that? Look, the rice is cooked perfectly. Can you see that? Perfectly. One hour. All right, so a couple of grape leaves like this. Small bites. You can either do a whole platter, you know, and do the toothpick thing, you know what we talked about. Let's turn that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we take a little bit of the tzatziki. Oh, I know. Playing with my emotions, too. 
Now, think about it. You want to make it simple while you're passing them around. What I generally do is right down the old middle, I just do a little bit like that. Garnish it very, very simple. And there you have it. The old stuffed grape leaves. <laughs> Got to make some friends. Mm. Now, back to chicken liver land. When this is cool, you know, in the food processor. Not too long. You don't want it to be a paste. Then, my next favorite thing, the antipasti, the crostini from Italy, is to take the chicken liver mousse or spread right on the crostini like this, okay? And then you can just decorate your platter. I like chopped onion on top of mine. Right at the end, chopped onion. Oh, my God! <laughs> Stick around. We'll be right back, everybody. Yeah. Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. All right, so we uh, got a little bit of our chicken liver. Like I said, if you like to put a little bit of a uh, little bit of chopped onion in there, sometimes it works really good. Oh yeah, they don't know where I'm going right now. Like, what's he doing? He's out of his mind. You can feel the love, can't you, Doc? Feel the love. Feel the love. All right. One of my favorite small bites no matter if you're in Spain, in Portugal, Greece, doesn't matter. Right down the street here in New York City are olives. Now, a couple of things. There are lots of varieties of olives. We showed you some earlier that we had. We have a few that are stuffed, green, less riper, black, riper, depending on uh, how they leave them on the tree. But you can't take an olive off a tree. The only thing you can do with it is make olive oil. You can't eat an olive off the tree. It'll make you pucker up like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> oh, yeah, you want to pull, try a few jokes. I've been there. Oh, yeah, here, look. I have fresh olives. Here, have some. It's like, that's because they got to be cured. Now, the name is marinated. They got to be cured. You can just salt cure them, which is brining them. That's fine. Or you can do some other kicked up things to them. But they take a while to cure, to become edible. Six months, sometimes a year. There are places in the Mediterranean, they have them in barrels for years till they get delicious. Now, these are those beautiful, big, black olives that have been cured only. Now, if you get regular cured olives, this is great snack food. You do a few twists like this, what I'm getting ready to show you, and then you just put them back in a jar in a container, keep them in the ice box. You get somebody that pops in on you. You're going to have a little late dinner. You need a little snack. You take some of these olives out. Oh, watch this one. I take these cured olives. I add lots of fresh garlic. <laughs> Okay? I add the zest. I add the zest of one lemon or one orange or both if you'd like. The juice of one lemon and one orange. Crushed red pepper. Okay? Pimentum weather, right? 
little of that, that's going to be the heat. They've already got salt. They've already been curing. Fresh rosemary. Oh, yeah. Fresh rosemary. Now, that's it. I mean, no, uh, no big deal. Fold them. Let them marinate. If the olive is cured, this will only take a day or two. Or you, like I said, just leave them in the icebox. So now we have a kicked up black olive. Now, these olives here... These olives here are pichelin, okay? A little firmer, they're green. They also been cured or brined for a long time. Watch how we're gonna kick these up. We're not gonna stuff no pimento in them. We're not gonna stuff no garlic cloves. We have those over there. Watch this. Fresh oregano, okay? Good amount of it. Just gonna chop it up a little bit. Now, with most fresh herbs, you're not gonna get any, you smell that? that the pungency is coming out, the aromatics are coming out because we're breaking the leaf, okay? You can either do that by hand or you can do that with a knife. So we're going to take fresh oregano, put those on our pichelin olives. Slices of lemon, okay? Almost like we're going to cure them. Slices of garlic cloves, okay? <laughs> Lemon juice, crushed red pepper, and then we're going to let these cure, just like this, okay? Then I'm going to show you what those look like. So we've got a lemon-cured oregano olive, and we got those kicked-up black olives. Frico, in Italy, with cheese. Watch how simple this is. Non-stick pan, take a little bit of butter. Now... You need good Parmesan cheese for this, Parmesan Reggiano. And sometimes I recommend, depending on like the humidity out there, you may want to add just a tiny bit of flour to your grated Parmesan. And then what you do is you just kind of put these in a nonstick pan and spread it out. When we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Stick around. We'll be right back. Little bites. Gibbs and Cliff. Very, very important. These fricos. These fricos, very, very important when you take them out. It's kind of like making an omelet. So you can either keep them straight like this, or as soon as you take them out of the pan, you can put them over a ramekin or a dowel. You can um, shape them. Okay, they'll make a shape. And then you can fill them with anything that you want. I like them just like this. Another thing, we were talking, Jill and I, a second ago, and that is, is that you can basically do these in the oven and you don't have to worry about them on parchment paper. But in a non-stick skillet, it's kind of like making an omelet. You see, what I'm doing here is, and you don't have to panic. Don't call 911. It's okay. If it's not moving, it's because it hasn't cooked enough. Okay? There's something about this food of love thing, this Parmesan Reggiano cheese where this comes from, the land that this comes from. It's unbelievable. I don't know. It's, makes me happy, this stuff. <laughs> I just walk around. Can you imagine going in the subway here in New York City with a wedge of Parmesan like this? Nobody messes with me when I go on there. I just, I'm looking at them. Anyhow. All right, so we're going to have our chicken liver. We've got a few of our fricos that we're going to put See, and you bust them up like that, and you, oh, here, try, trust me. Uh, okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our lemon-cured pichelin like this with the garlic. Take some of those black olives that we had, right? Just put some of those. 
you know, maybe a few grape, grape uh, leaves, some tzatziki. All right, look, I'm going to try to get this. Look, see? See, it's moving. Look, you see? It's moving. Watch, 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 watch. See what I mean? I'm Emma Lugasi. Thanks for joining me tonight.